twice for wide open layups and once was a killer. Like the shot clock almost expired, he gives up a wide open layup. And, and I mean, some of these things are just, you know, I, the coaches can set up whatever they want defensively. If guys just let someone backdoor cut and lay it in, you know, there's just not a lot a coach can do about it. You know, Cheryl says that they play with purpose and confidence. We get glimpses of what they're capable of. I wish I knew the magic formula for that to be more consistent. Yeah, if you had that, uh, Cheryl, you'd be making a lot of dollars right now. Yeah, and, and you know, the key to what she said in the very first sentence is the purpose. Play with a purpose. I mean, not what they do on the offensive end. I'm telling you, more than half the time, I can't tell you the purpose of a lot of the passes and things that they make. Well, and Tim brings up, and it's something I was going to talk about, there have been, what, three straight games now where they have had seven-minute droughts. That is, you can do that against teams that you're not supposed to win. You can do that against teams that you're not going to beat. Because that's what's going to happen. When yeah, you do that uh, you're not going to be you're not going to beat Ohio State Saturday if you have a seven minute drought. I mean, it's, they have, we all pretty plain and simple. No, that's not going to happen. Dennis says they have no desire to win. Todd, you did. Why don't they? That's a tough question for anybody to answer. But it it's certainly hard to see that 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 winning the attitude. Of urgency, out there. I mean, the, you know, they played with a sense of urgency from the seven or you know eight or eight or nine minute mark maybe on, but. Prior to that, there was none. And and how's that how's that possible? I mean, if they don't have a sense of urgency to start the game playing yeah, in Chris in, Norris against Ohio State, I mean, what are they going to do? I mean, they're just they're going to get blown out of the gym. Yeah, and uh, whoops, what was that? You talk about Ohio State coming in on Saturday. That they're going from playing. The worst team in the conference, probably, sure. to a team that's supposed to be one of the best, but is not played like one of the best. So it's an opportunity for them to, to get a win against a quality team, quote unquote, if they can get themselves up to standard. But this is not that, and they're yeah. not going to beat any top half of a team that's from the top half of the Big Ten when you play like this. Nope. They're fortunate to get out of here with a win tonight. Yeah, they're fortunate that tonight on the schedule was Northwestern. Otherwise. You know they don't win this ball game. I don't care who else it is. There's not another team in the league they would they would win this game against. And um, you know there was there was just too many errors when it came to you know 13 turnovers against uh, or I'm sorry 16 turnovers against Northwestern just doesn't even make any sense. Like they just you know, they were turning it over with some just poor decisions and, and carelessness with the ball. And uh, you know th- this team this team has I-, I keep saying over and over again they've got a lot of things they've got to clean up and work on and you know we're, we're getting ready to find out we're getting we're getting ready to have uh, uh, Ohio State who's a, we know is a really good team be here on Saturday and then they're going to have two road games next week and and we're getting ready to find out a lot more about them in the next week got a lot of people joining us tonight Chris Norris my man his son plays for the IU football team awesome. he's a oh, great end he's going to be a good one next year probably uh, Tim says, why could we not play the first 33 minutes like the last I seven? Agree. Yeah, that's, well, that's a I agree. Well, I heard someone else say it. I think we had the TV commentators say it. And it's just that. It's like, okay, we're about to lose at home to Northwestern, the worst team in the conference. I guess we better start playing now. And it almost was literally just like that. It really was. I mean, they, you know, they, they, they were down by 10, and Northwestern had a three-pointer in the air by one of their best players. I mean, if that thing goes to 13, I... Uh, I don't know that there's anybody you can come back from. I know that's only a one-basket difference, but it's really a big difference when you're looking at 13-point deficit with seven minutes to go. I don't know, you just, you'd have to have a miracle almost to come back from that, and they definitely didn't didn't perform a miracle tonight. And they just have got to uh, they've got to play. You know, harder is not really the right word. Just that sense of urgency. More and determined. That, yeah, they, they've got to have. I mean, that's why I like the, the Cheryl's comment about purpose because I mean they've got to play and understand what it is they're trying to accomplish. I felt like the first half of the game, everybody's trying to get it inside so much that, you know, they just lose sight of, of wide open shots and wide open plays. I mean, they had they had just stupid shot clock violations tonight. I mean, there, there was one late in the game against Rob Fennessy that you just, I mean, that's where the minute to go. The game, yeah, well, you, you could say the game was on the line because although Indiana was up by three, they had the ball and a chance to put, put the away. game away. Yeah. And what they, they end up giving the game, violation. giving it away. Yeah, it's just I, that's we've talked about basketball IQ in, in, in every game now. It's becoming more and more apparent. They're not having it. They, they, they're just 
they seem lost at some times out there. Well, we've heard Archie talk in the last few days about how the backcourt's got to, you know, they got to step up and start playing better. And, you know, right now, you, you're not going to, you can say Aldo and play better, but Devontae Green, Devontae Green finishes the game 0 for 6 from the floor, one point. He did have six rebounds. He played 20 minutes and has one point from Devontae Green. I mean, against Northwestern, we probably still would have said they had a chance at winning the game with Devontae with one point. But not against, you know, not if you're looking at Ohio State. He, he has one point on Saturday. They will not win. Jennifer says a fugly win is still a win. Ryan in <laughs> Michigan says a must do to win. All the best, Todd. Uh, I'd like to see Al, Jim, Al, Al Durham step up today and uh, lead at the guard position. Yeah, he did. You, you, got. You've got to give some credit. I mean, yes, yes, they should have never been in that position. But you've got to give some credit to the fact that, that uh, I mean, they were able to come back and win. Um, you know they really <laughs> they they really almost put themselves in in a position where the coaching staff Archie Miller was real real close to catching some serious heat after a game like this and the, and the players don't even realize I don't think what a bad position they about put him in. I'm laughing at Jeff Lost. He said Hunter must be one hell of a shooter out in, in the, during yeah, practice. In practice, yeah, <laughs> I'm with you, brother. Uh, hey, I Todd, appreciate you, Shelly. Appreciate you joining us. Alan says no, Todd. You said a win at Wisconsin. As I quote, they, Wisconsin, can't fix shooting in two days. What's that? I don't remember. It's, Todd, I said. Yeah, we'll have to just skip out. I don't remember. The truth, Robert Dakota, 12 and 3. You ain't lying. That's right. You ain't lying. J.S. Hook is joining. What's up, J.S. Hook? Dennis says uh, they can beat anyone, but not with the scoring droughts they have. You're not going to beat anyone hardly, hardly with a scoring drought like that because it does so many things. So they are. It puts you in a bad position. It puts the rotation that's coming up next in a bad position. It, it, it puts everybody in a, in a bad position. It puts the defense in a bad position. It changes everything. Here's, what, here's what's even crazier when you think about that seven-minute drought. It was to end the first half, and Indiana was in the bonus. That's when you're just like, how in the world could they not at least get to the free throw line? I mean, there, there's – I don't know. I, I – uh, I have been ultra optimistic, and, and even in a win with this one right here, I'm less optimistic. But the thing that's really uh, staggering my mind is Archie Miller came in with a pension uh, of being known for defense, yep. and team his teams under him have done nothing but struggle defensively. Once they get past the first ten games of the season, it's like they regress. And other people either figure them out and quickly make adjustments and just cause yeah, nothing. Yeah, they only gave up 62 points. No, I'm not. I, I, I bet it was against the Northwestern. Right? Yeah, it's but 62 team. points, again, I mean, that's – if you don't score more than 62 points, you, you shouldn't win. I, so, I, I mean, what, what are you going to hold them? I mean, we're not Virginia. I'm just talking about – You're talking not going to hold them in the 50s. I mean, I'm not 60. talking about this game per, per se, just overall. We talked earlier about them being lost uh, too yeah. many times. Yes. That's what I mean. Defensively, it's just like, wow, they're not close to being locked in. Yeah, no. And if you're not locked in, you're not going to win a lot of games. You're, you're, you're going to – it's a 50-50 crapshoot, and you're going to lose the ones where you don't shoot well and you don't do everything perfect, you don't hit your free throws, and you're going to win the ones where you do do those, do those things. But I don't know that that's something that they want to rely on all year long. Well, there was five baskets in this game that, that were just guys losing their man and, and that ball that got laid in. And, I mean, true true layup, like layup line layups. And, you know, you can sit there and say this team would have been better off if once the shot clock got down to 10, they all jumped back in a 2-3 zone because at least it would have kept the ball out of the lane. But they were just giving up. You know, I, 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 we're, we're just we're just going to keep repeating the same thing over and over again. Like, they did a lot of bad things in this game. Fortunately, they came out with a win. They found a way to win. I think that's what we're going to hear. Well, my man Pete saying. wants to say, he says no negatives, a win is a win. Big Ten tough. They figured out things they hadn't done earlier in the year. Keep positive. Have a great show, guys. Agree. There's that. There's that. that. There's that. I, 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 there's I'm with you. We're going to hear Archie Miller in the post game. I'm sure he's going to say we found a way to win. That's the only positive you take away from this. I mean, they did. They found a way to win. They... Uh, they did not play well. They didn't play well enough for 30 minutes in this game to win. But in the last 10 minutes, they found a way to win. And that's that's the positive you got to take from it. And you've got to get them to understand they have to play like for 40 minutes the way they played in the last 10 minutes. Jordan says that Archie threatened to uh, run them until they couldn't, until they couldn't eat supper. And 
uh, to get their heads out of their ass. Todd Patton. Hey, Todd. I met Todd here one day at the Yogi's. Chase Jackson Davis was solid. Al saved us in the second half. Keep up the good work, Jim and Todd. Thank you very much, Todd. We appreciate you, man. Uh, Tim says, I think a turning point was when Archie switched and put Durham on Spencer. Uh, we don't see a lot of changes. Yeah, again. Tim, all, Tim, all you did was listen to Seth Davis make that comment about seven <laughs> times in the second half tonight. But, uh, you know, I, you can, yeah, I guess you can say that. I mean, I don't know that he did anything that was crazy. I mean, Rob Fennessy is their best defender by far. I don't think that Al did anything crazy on him that, that really changed, you know, the overall outcome of the game. I mean, he, he played okay on him. I mean, Spencer Spencer had his best game of the year, and the guy finishes with 15 points, and he's 5 of 8 from the from the field. So, I mean, he didn't do that great a job on him. Dennis, tell, uh, tell Ben Shoulders you heard his name on here. Paul Haynes says, when will Archie get someone who can shoot from outside? I'm in. Let the big players we have the rest of the season play a zone against us and pack it in. Going to be another long season. Yeah, that's the one thing I, I don't understand. We're, we're three years in. Needed a shooter since day one. I, I don't understand why it just has not been a, a task that is yeah, but far I mean, none to, to accomplish. Galloway is a shooter. Galloway coming in next year is a shooter. Leo can shoot it. Year four. It's taken four years to get there is so. all. But, yes. Yeah, so, okay, okay but, but I mean – Rob Fennessy is, is but now you're, but you're lying on, but you're gonna, in the fourth year you're going to be lying on a freshman to be your shooter. Just saying. Shooter, the basket. If he can shoot, change. he can shoot. The basket doesn't change. If he hits, he hits. Yeah. If he shoots, he shoots. But but uh, you do have to. Fennessy's a decent shooter. I mean, Fennessy. He can be, but it's gone away. It's, it's gone, gone away. His, all of his confidence has gone away. I mean, he's he's not only become a bad shooter, he's become a bad player right now. I mean, it's like, it's, just, just, it's, un, it's, un, it's, un, it's un it's it's the weirdest thing. He has no points tonight in 18 minutes. Three turnovers. One rebound, no, two rebounds, four fouls. Like, I don't even know who Fennessy is out there on the court anymore. Like, he's Thanks a lot for joining us here after the game with Todd Leary. Coming to you live from Yogi's here in Bloomington. Brought to you by Best Beer Incorporated in Bloomington. Have yourself a, a nice ice cold Budweiser or Michelob Light, Michelob Ultra, Bud Light. Whatever you fancy. Here, whatever, but, you, uh, whatever you fancy. Uh, you uh, get it from somewhere the best beers provides it for. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a six-pack tonight. You weren't going to need all six of them to get past this game, but whew, it was almost a 12-packer. Yeah, it was deep. It was deep into the alcohol cabinet tonight because this one this one about got away from them. But, but it didn't, thankfully. Uh, Richard says, what is the off- – I lost it. What is the offensive system? Just nutshell it because it seems non-existent. Well, Richard, uh, uh, even before Todd attempts to do that, it's 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 going to be a reach, isn't it? A system, I don't know that I can answer that. I can tell you the the goal is to get the ball into Joey Brunk and Trace Jackson Davis, and hopefully from now on, uh, Justin Smith's hands inside. I mean, he did. Those, those guys inside are tough to deal with, and and Indiana is much better when they run the offense through them. Now tonight. Those guys had some turnovers. I mean, uh, Trace Jackson Davis had a couple of turnovers. Justin Smith with five turnovers. Joey Brunk had one turnover, which is not bad for him. Um, You know, as much as those guys need to touch it, they're going to have a few turnovers. You're going to have to live with a few. But 16 turnovers against Northwestern, I would like to, at the end of the year, if we can remember to do it, let's go back and analyze how many. How many the first half. Let's go back and analyze all the games that Northwestern plays in the Big Ten and how many times the other team has 16 turnovers. They just don't force that many turnovers. So, you know, that's going to be one of the higher totals, I think. Uh, Christopher says, Todd Leary, could you please somehow get some college eligibility and show these players <laughs> Boy, I wish how I to hit three-point shots? Trust me, he wishes he could. Yeah. He'd be in there. There, there was, uh, you know, we have we had uh, five, I think he had at one point six guys on our team that shot 40% from the three-point line for their careers. Dennis? And this team doesn't have anybody that can shoot it in a game. Dennis wants to know, is Bob Knight going to be at the Ohio State game? Hearing rumors that he is. Well, that's what it's been going out. Rumors heading pretty strong, isn't it? My neck is, I got some neck problems. That rumor's flying pretty strong. That rumor is hot right now. The rumor's hot. That. It's hot. Uh, Let's just say the last former, it's a former player and former manager alumni game, uh, or reunion game, I should say, and the last event that was a former player and manager event, he did show up at. Mark thinks that uh, Indiana played a lot better with Levante on the bench. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. 
I mean, when Devontae is playing, when Devontae is making shots, everybody loves him. When he doesn't make any shots, I mean, he, he had one point tonight. He didn't make any field goals. In the first half, they were negative eight with him on the floor. Yeah, that, that's a stupid stat. Nah. Like, that doesn't mean anything. It, Not always. Sometimes it has those. Yeah. I mean, you know, if he played a full 40 minutes, they'd have been plus four with him on the floor. So that's why that stat doesn't mean Paul wants to know, do college teams bring in shooting specialists to help develop players during the season? The shot doctor. They do not. That's actually not not allowed. It is illegal. Oh. You, you, can, you can't bring anyone in. That's, that's paid? Not, that's not on your – no, not at all. They so you could even, not go in and help? Nope. I offered it, believe me. It's not allowed. There you go, folks. There's it's your allowed. answer. There is your answer. Because I wrote uh, about a seven-page document that, William that picked a bad day. the problems <laughs> with this guy's shots right now. William picked a bad day to quit drinking. Yeah, it was. Oh, man, it's a long one, Darren. I just saw Smith blow off Archie when he came out of the game. I won't ask what had happened if one of the night's kids had done that because I know. But it was definitely a problem. You lose your man and he gets a layup and you blow off the coach. The senior leadership on this team is either non-existent or is the problem. Attitude reflects leadership. Agree. Totally agree. That's unacceptable. I didn't see it happen. But if something like that did happen, then it's it's not acceptable. There was another time, I think this was in the first half. Uh, yes, because Indiana's ball was on the other end of the court. Justice Smith was going toward the goal, loses the, just loses the ball. Ends up on the ground. No foul. Everybody else is taking off, and he's kind of on the floor. And finally, he was, oh, i got to get up and go. Just lollygagging about, and the only reason he ended up on the floor is because he lost the ball and because he did not even hardly get hit. But the effort, it was scary when you don't see guys giving a 100%, and I don't think that there was hardly anybody that you could say was giving 100% tonight. Yeah, I mean. And I know that this is a Northwestern game. Harder to get up for. I get. To, I, I, I give you that. Yeah, I, that part of it, I I mean, if, you, if they're not getting up for these games, like I said before, I mean, the schedule – the schedule has set up for Indiana so poorly in that they had three games in three weeks, basically, and that no no player enjoys that. That's that's bad. That's a bad time. But the, this is a game situation. Like they, you know, this is this is the days that you love and enjoy, especially that are not in school right now. I mean, the, today has been a fun day all the way around, and and you know, I don't think it's lack of effort. Um, I think I don't think they know how to play hard. I don't. I think there's a couple of guys on the team that I, I'm not sure they know what playing hard really is. To be honest with you, I, I agree with you. And I, I put absolutely. Justin Smith in that category. Oh, absolutely, I agree with you a thousand percent. Darren says I you will be on fire Saturday market. Hey, Justine, thanks for joining us. Richard uh, says on the plus side, we actually hit some free throws. Man, did it they is. ever! It and is. we talked about this earlier. That won the game for them. If this is any other typical Indiana game where they're hitting fifty percent, they end up losing this game, but. Two guys specifically stood out, and yeah, Alder, Alder, Alder and, and, and Trey Jackson, Jackson Davis. Davis. Yeah, the two of them really were struggled at the eighteen line. of twenty-one between the two of them. How about so, that? Yeah, that's that, that's impressive, and and it was obviously definitely needed. But you know, this is ooh, and man, we got to give Richard uh, Justin Smith some credit. I mean, he he, he scores. He did a lot of really good things. Seven eleven from the field, and and so he's he's working to get those shots. That's what he needs to be doing. He did a good job of it. Got to give him credit for that. I mean, so if you look at a couple of stat lines, you would have said Indiana would have won by 20. I mean, Justin Smith is 7 of 11. Trace Jackson Davis is 7 of 11. Those two guys at 14 of 22 and, you know, combining for 39 points and 13 rebounds, you would have said Indiana would have won easily. And then if you would have given me the stats that Devontae Green had one point and Rob Finnessy had no points and uh, who else? Armand Franklin had two points. Um, you know, you, you, the backcourt that Archie Miller said needed to step up, yes, Al Durham carried everybody because he finishes the game with 16 points. He carried all the rest of the guards because there's not another guard that I don't even want to say can score, but, but contributed positively in any way. Like, they do, they were just, you know, no one had a ton of assists. Let's see. Any, yeah, Fennessey had three assists, I guess. we got to give him credit for that. But three assists in 18 minutes as a guard is probably what you expect. Yeah, Jerry, I think we were just talking about that uh, on Justin Smith. There's the exact same thing that you're mentioning there. Uh, with, with Justin Smith's uh, laissez-faire Yeah, attitude. yeah you know, I, I, he's a cool guy. I mean, there's just there's no two ways about it. Hey, David. Justin Smith's a cool guy, and I don't think that Coach Knight. If you don't listen to the show, cool guys are reference to uh, 
Not a good thing. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's it's a guy that, that just thinks he's cool and doesn't have to play hard. And, and you know, we've, this team has, at times, it's got a bunch of cool guys on the floor at one time. And, and Justin Smith, look, you got, I think we got the best out of Justin Smith that we could ask for tonight. I, I, he's never going to play harder than he plays on a regular basis. And tonight, you know, he did some really good things. He, he had five turnovers, so he did some bad things. But, but if you can get 18 points out of him on 11 shots, I think you got to take it. He only took two three-pointers. <laughs> That's a positive. Darren, you talk about my dad. That was yesterday. It was his happy birthday, but thank you for mentioning it. He says he's Brother's, so tomorrow. Birthday. Brother's birthday is tomorrow, along with Will Leary. Mine is, yes. Will Leary's is tomorrow. James Sheward says Archie uh, was a shooter in college. Why does he not have some shooters on his team? It doesn't even look like they have shooting practices. Well, we've talked about that. I mean, it's... It's that they've been devoid of shooting since he has been here, and that has not changed as of yet. We talked about hopefully that changes next year with uh, Trey Galloway or Anthony Leo actually coming in. Anthony Leo is probably the better known shooter of the two. Yeah. Hopefully that does help remedy some of Indiana's problems, but they are definitely devoid of someone you can count on night in, night out. Yeah, I mean, they've got the Devontae Green is, is the only guy I think that you can realistically say is going to be a consistent shooter for him. And, and I'm saying that on a night where he has no baskets. I mean, he finished the game 0 for 6. But he's still by far their best shooter, and, and you can count on him. He's a, he's a good quality scorer. He had an off night when it comes to that. What he's got to learn to do is do some other things. I mean, you look, he threw that one-handed long bounce pass all the way down the court. He threw it again tonight, only tonight it finally got through. And it was a great play and, and a dunk for Indiana. And tonight it looked great. Every, every other time he's thrown it, it's been a turnover. Ryan from uh, Michigan says, even though Green did not score a lot and was out of the rotation at the end, they will need him moving forward. Yes, they will. And he had Agreed. great encouragement and sportsmanship as one of the captains. I like him. They, they will definitely need him. Like, do not, don't write him off. Don't, you know, <laughs> just because he, he had a, a night like he had tonight, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of times Indiana's going to rely on Devontae to score. And look, look at, look at the guys who scored tonight. I mean, Al Durham, he hit a three-pointer, very first basket of the game, he hit a three-pointer, okay? He made one other basket the rest of the game, and it was a layup. So no other outside field goals. Justin Smith made a 17-footer. Every other basket was in the lane, although he made it, He made his first three of the game as well. Trace Jackson Davis, all seven of his field goals are inside the lane. So there was no outside shooting in this game. It, that, that didn't change anything out here. I mean, this team shot 37% overall, only 21% from the three-point line, and that's when they made their first two. They were one for their next... 12 from the three-point line after that first two the first two makes. I don't have a name for this one. I know it's coming from Paducah, Kentucky. We have some grit. Oh, yeah. finally tightened up the rotations. Uh, an upperclassman actually has leadership abilities. Justin and Al, let's play some golf. Todd, who's your in Paducah, Kentucky? I like it. There you go. I like it. That's, uh, you know, th- th- this... Uh, that might be a Troy and Paducah. I, I think it may well be. Boob well. says, uh, any chances the general will uh, be on Saturday's show? We would be no. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I can assure you there is no chance of when that. Rainey, what's up? Go nose. No chance of that. Dr. J's on with us. Doc, you got to get to bed soon, man. Jay you got Rose, early, uh, got early you, with us in southern Indiana, make sure that uh, if you need your dental needs, go to uh, Reynolds Family Dentistry there in Sellersburg. They're legit. They, uh, Both Dr. Reynolds are awesome. Did you say one was your favorite? No. <laughs> I like a Dr. J, I just like saying Dr. J. Yeah, me too. Mark Ramey says, no easy wins this year in the Big Ten. Well, no. You better show up and play. Sh- kidding. Yeah, but you know what? Some should be a little easier yeah, than others. Which, yeah, there's no doubt about and that. You can, make, you can make some easier than others. And, and with Nebraska and Northwestern, the two easiest games at home in the league, you made you went to overtime with one and were down ten to another. Indiana's making this season a lot more difficult yeah, on itself. Uh, it's making it a lot more difficult for the fans. I mean, you got teams like right now playing Illinois, Wisconsin, that are, are going to be struggling. They they want to make the tournament, and you know Wisconsin beating Indiana at home. They want to come to to Bloomington. They watch. A Northwestern team doing that. <laughs> they they're, like, right. they're like, oh, hey, we got a shot down there. Yeah, team, teams don't really do that, though. I mean, well, you know, I mean, you know, every game takes on its own identity, and every game is different. Here, here's what, here's what they will overall look at is, hey, nobody is going into Bloomington and getting blown out right now. So, 
you know, I, just because this game was this close, I can assure you Ohio State is not coming in here thinking, oh, we'll kill them because, you know, they, they struggled with Northwestern. Every game is different. Every game takes on its own identity. And, and this game, you know, North, uh, uh, Ohio State already on a three-game losing streak coming in here on Saturday. I mean, they're going to be trying to kill Indiana. I mean, they are. They they see blood, and they are going to be going for it. And this does not here. seem like a team that is ready for a fight like that. Yeah, well, yeah, they don't. I, I don't disagree with you. I'd love to argue with you about that, but, I, but I'm not going to. And, you know, and we've talked about, uh, I didn't see it when Justin Smith was taken out one time, apparently, and he brushed past Archie. But that brings up, I mean, Christopher points out for the players who aren't respecting Coach Miller when being taken out of the ball game, they need to be benched. First of all, you shouldn't even be telling, that should just be done. Sure, that shouldn't even first be of all. option. But secondly, it brings up a question, and I've, I've asked this, that I'm, I wonder, does Archie have this team? Does he have the respect of this team? I mean, I know that's not something you can answer per se, but I, I think it's a question that is legitimate now. I don't know that he has this team. When you've got your quote-unquote veteran players blowing you off, uh, doing this or that. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see that, so I'm not going to make a huge issue out of that. But, but you know, what I will say is, you know, they're, they're, he needs some things done out of them, and, and they're not really doing it. So whether it's blowing him off or just a lack of respect in, in executing the game plan, I mean, you know, I, I truly believe, I, I think Justin Smith is one of them without really trying to single anybody out. I think that, um, you know, there are a few guys who don't, who are not scared of losing playing time. And, you know, I, I would put Devontae in that category before tonight, but uh, Devontae only played 20 minutes in this game. Um, I would definitely put Justin Smith in that category. I don't think he's worried about his playing time. He knows he's going to play no matter what. Why would he? He's been shooting three pointers for three years yeah, I agree. With, with no repercussions. That part of it, uh, I cannot explain. Like well, it's, Jerome, it's, the Jerome Hunter situation where Jerome Hunter comes in the game and shoots three pointers, the guy is shooting close to 10% from the three point line. I. I Here's the funny part. Seth Davis, at the end of that ball game, was giving Pete Nance for Northwestern a hard time, saying he's not the guy they want shooting those three pointers. He only shoots 29% from the three point line, so why would they have him shooting him? And I'm sitting there going, 29% if he has a second best three point shooter. Uh, yeah. Justin says, in, I'm in the a wins a win crowd. Uh, it was ugly as hell, but got to grind them out in a Big Ten play. Surely they can find a way to play 500 ball the rest, rest of the way. 20 and 11 gets you in the dance. Um, let's hope that that's not the attitude, though. I mean, I know what Justin's saying, and he's right from a, a statistical standpoint. It, here's, here, here's, where, here's where that's an issue, okay? Is because I said this before, and, and I know people don't like to hear it. I don't like to say it. But, but we expected him to lose the Maryland game at Maryland. But then when they lose, everybody is like, oh, my gosh, they're terrible. They'll never win again. They're awful. So, so if you say right now we'll take 500 ball and 20 wins, if I said to everyone right now, hey, look, would, would you take 22 wins right now? Okay, that would be 10 more victories. And they have what? How many more games do we have? We've played four in the Big Ten, right? So we have 16 more games, not including the, turn the Big Ten tournament, so at least 17 more games. If I told you we were going to win 10 out of 17, it would mean we had to have seven losses. And no one's going to accept seven losses. No one right now is going to say, yes, we'll take those 10 wins and take seven losses. But then after the, each one of those losses, you're, you, you're okay with it. I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with losing. I'm not, I'm not willing to say, you know, yes, we'll take, we, we would all take 22 wins out of this team right now. But I'm not going to be happy after seven losses. Yeah, I think it's, like I said before, I don't think it's the, the losing. It's how they're losing. Um, they were supposed to lose to Maryland. I, we, it, yeah, it, but we still complained about it. I mean, no, we still, no, no, no. That's where I disagree. We didn't complain about the loss. complained about how they're losing. I, but I didn't have a problem with how they lost. They were down by Most three people, with 14 minutes to go. Most people didn't watch the whole game then. If you only talk about them being down 30, that happened in a seven-minute stretch. So there's 33 other minutes as a part of that game. I mean, that... They were down by three with 14 minutes to go. They were in that game. They they quit. I think mean, three consecutive games and stretches of both seven minutes or longer without scoring. I agree with that. Is a totally agree with problem. That. I don't. I uh, totally agree. Plays with that. into all that. Doctor J says, "Don't get why they change intensity is so drastic. Uh, I don't know when it's been that drastic. I haven't seen it where it's it's on the, the high end at any time yet. I mean, um, yeah. It, it took it took dire situation for him to get into it in this game and." 
Um, you know, it, I don't. I don't know. I can get. Trust me. I can get as frustrated as anyone can. I can be Johnny Negative all day long. Uh, but but you know, at the end of the day, you know what what do we expect out of this team? I mean, what what do you expect out of them? If you're really willing to accept 22 wins, then you've got to be willing to accept. You know, bat, if you play well in all of the remaining 17 games, you, you're going to have a chance to win 15 of them at least. Now, we, we're, I, don't, I don't think this team's capable of that right now. But if they play to their capability, if they play to what the good times that they play in a game, so like they played in the last seven minutes, like they got to the free throw line, like they executed at the free throw line, if they play to that level, they can beat anybody in the country. But they don't do that consistently enough in the game. And so I'm just realistic enough to know, you know, when they come away with a win in a game, yes, it's ridiculous. I, I feel like I could have taken four guys from the hyper and we could have beat Northwestern tonight. But, but I mean, you got to accept it. It is what it is right now. Robert, the truth, Carter's birthday's on Saturday. You have to remind us, Robert. Uh, hopefully Indiana gives you a nice birthday present and beats uh, Ohio State. Yeah. And Briggs says they did this run with Green on the bench. Uh, Dennis says, imagine that, Ed, go Hoosiers. Yeah, and you know, I mean, you, you can look at overall, you know, what do you, so what do you, when you make a statement like that, what are you trying to accomplish? What I hope that accomplishes is that Devontae realizes they can win without him, and so he plays better. I mean, I don't want them to all of a sudden play without him. Devontae is the... The only guy that has shown consistent uh, consistency of making outside shots. The only one on the entire team. So we don't want to play without it. We just want him to rein in his craziness from time to time. But you're not going to get that. So you, yeah, you, I mean, you I get, get, look, you get the good with the bad. I think. If tonight, okay, so it, usually he plays like 26 to 28 minutes. So he played six to eight minutes less than that tonight, and he didn't make any shots. If he makes four out of seven shots. No one would be mentioning his name right now. Everyone would be fine with how he played. It's because he didn't make any baskets. It's because he didn't play any good. He made a great steal and assist. Now, it was a terrible pass that he's turned it over in that same pass every other game, but tonight it worked. And so, I mean, I'm just, I, I don't want to sit here and say I want to win without Devontae Green. I mean, I I, I think that it's Jerome, really very difficult Jerome, Hunter, Jerome Hunter, yes, I, I don't think he deserves to be on the floor. Uh, uh, Davizi Anderson, I don't think he deserves to be on the floor. Those guys have not had enough production to prove to me that they deserve to be on the floor. Ed says they had lacrosse players on the floor yeah. for Northwestern. He's done that to a lot of players, to a lot of teams, though. He's a good player. I mean, he's he's an All-American lacrosse player and, and, you know, best player in the country for all four years He was he's played. And But, I mean, that doesn't mean he's a bad basketball player. He's crafty and... You know, he probably had his best game of the year tonight. Bear was happy that Archie put someone on the bench and let him sit, sit there. Okay. Jerry says, Todd, this is your fault. You should have had a college son by now that can shoot the ball. <laughs> you should have had him wearing those candy stripes. Yep. yep. Okay. He tried. I tried. He tried. I got three boys. This none of them, only one of them could shoot. He's still too young. Couldn't quite shoot as well as you yet. Uh, Bear says, uh, uh, yeah. Tom loafing around the court underneath and horseplay on the bench. With Archie, I didn't see that. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, what are you? Okay, so I mean, maybe I'm not going to single you out, Tom, but I kind of am also. I mean, what are you trying to accomplish with a statement like that? I mean, if you don't like this team, don't don't watch them. I mean, I, I want them to play better. I want them to do different things. But I'm not. There's I'm a lot not of frustration abandoning. out there. I'm not. A, I'm frust I'm as frustrated as anybody. But I'm not abandoning them. They're I don't my think team. They're abandoning them. He's my coach. Yeah, I mean, when you make a statement like that, I mean, you're just trying to. It's frustrating. Fans get frustrated, man. Right, so does Todd. Todd's a fan. Todd gets frustrated, believe me. Todd's got to take it. Todd's a professional. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just saying, when you when you when you make it a statement like that, I mean, I really don't know what you're trying to accomplish. Glenn's cool. Glenn says he's cool. Uh, Tim, the crowd had enough after 33 minutes of crap ball and got the team going in the last seven minutes because they didn't want to lose to the last place team at home. Who said that? Tim. Tim. Yeah. Well, Tim, you weren't there because most of the crowd left after 33 minutes. Did they really? Yeah, they did. Man, Pete says, uh, why the up and down effort uh, and output from game to game? One game, we praise the front court. The next bigs never seem to put it together as a team. That's uh, one of the big questions. This team is just uh, uber inconsistent. You don't know what you're going to get from them at any particular time. You don't know who's what, what part of the game is going to stand up and which isn't. And I think that's one of the frustrating things for fans. 
Yeah, I mean, early in the season, we tried to look at that from a positive standpoint, and we, we weren't sure who was going to be the leading scorer every night because different guys had the ability to do that. I don't think that's the case anymore. Now, Right now, we're trying to have a process of elimination as to who's going to play bad. And, and that's, you know, that's that's just our fan frustration. I mean, that is, that's that's the way it is. We're, we're focusing way more on the negatives right now than we are the positives because everyone's frustrated with this. I mean, you should not, this was not only Northwestern, which you expect to win. This is a bad Northwestern team. This team should not in any way, shape, or form be in the ballgame with Indiana. So, I mean, the, the frustration is legit. Chris says uh, Jerome Hurd looks horrible out there. Deron yes, Davis can't keep anybody in front of him on D. Yeah, um, what's up with Hunter? I, I think that you're seeing the best that they, they have to offer. Yeah, I they, they, I mean, the, the, my only answer to that is we shouldn't find out. I mean, they shouldn't be they shouldn't be on the floor. I mean, Deron Davis and Jerome Hunter, in my opinion, have not earned the right to be on the court. Hey, Gary in Naples, we appreciate you joining us, man. Um, Chris says this was IU's easiest game in the Big Ten this season. It's going to be a long couple of months. Yeah, it can be. I mean, but, yeah, but whatever. If we see this team that, that played against UConn, this, this team that played against Florida State, because those were good teams. Those were teams that did a lot of things positive that we're not seeing right now. And it can't be as simple as playing to your competition because that's going to get you beat. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but we've seen them play a lot better than they are right now. But this has been a sustained run of poor play. It is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm telling you, usually in this scenario after the game, I'm blaming most everything on lack of offense. But tonight, as many layups as they gave up, and I mean layups, like, you know, it, it's – it was always kind of a common rule, like like there's no layups. Like you know, if somebody comes in for a layup, they get drilled. I mean, if you're gonna, you get five fouls. Every foul is not a bad foul, and if you've got to put somebody on their back, you put them on their back. And then I'm not saying hurt anyone, but I'm saying like you've got to play mean and aggressive, and you got to protect the paint. And and it wasn't even a matter of Indiana not fouling them. There was no one anywhere near some of these players when they shot wide open layups. They're just back cuts that guys are laying the ball in. I, I, I'm just focusing on the negative. I mean, there's just there, there's this is a game you've got to look at, and you've got to just move on from it and say it's a W, and you've got to go on and start preparing for Ohio State. How often are, can you do that before you really start to? Well, you know, so that if they come out and play against Ohio State and play like this, they'll get drilled by 30. We'll be talking about that. We won't be talking about Northwestern anymore. But if they come out and win, we won't be talking about Northwestern anymore either. Nope. It, it's so. I mean, it's this. You, they've got to. You've got to accept the fact they got a W. And you've got to move on. I mean, they're, they're, this was one of the hardest things, and, and this is truly why I think, you know, I don't want to say why Coach Knight didn't adjust very well to, to the new modern player, but, you know, you've got to accept some mistakes and you've got to accept losses. I mean, no team goes undefeated since 1976. They prove that every year. So you've got to accept some losses. And, you know, I, I don't know how to do that. I'm not good at that. I, I hate losing. Like, I can't stand it. I, I, but the, the real frustrating as a part as a fan is sometimes I feel like I want to win worse than they do. And I think a lot of fans feel that way. And that, to me, um, they, I think they do. And they, they, sure. they and, it's see, and it looks like it to them. It looks too. like it to them. And, and I, I cannot sit here and tell you that that's not the case. I, I truly, I can't. I would love to be able to sit here and rebut that notion that that's the case. But I can't. Like, I, I don't know that. Um, you know, I, I, I don't see it from him either. I'm the same way. Richard says, uh, you guys mentioned treating his possession as the most important thing, but we tried to hurry. Anytime we had a sniff at a run, the guys could have pulled back and set something up, but instead forced a shot or a bad pass. There's that bad passing again. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, we're just, I mean, like I said, look at the overall. I mean, if you want to focus on the negatives, you can focus on the negatives. You want to look at the positives. They got to the free throw line 30 times. They lead the nation in that category. They made 23 of those 30 free throws. They shot 77% from the free, free throw line. Focus on the positives. They got a W. They're 12 and 3. You know, if you, if you, if, if you want to nitpick every little thing that happens out there on the court, you're going to have plenty of opportunity probably on Saturday. Uh, I'd say so, and they're going to have plenty of opportunity throughout the season. I think that's just what's got people you know, so fearful. They, they expected this team to, to make the NCAA tournament this year, and uh, 
I think that's a, they're in a position to make the NCAA tournament. They're in a position right to, but they, they're they also have in a that position to not to. And I think that's what a lot of people are concerned about. With, with, if this play continues, how if they play like this against an Ohio State, you get drilled. It's not even. Or, but not just Ohio State. If you play like this against an Iowa or Illinois or Rutgers uh, or Penn State, and I can go down the line pretty deep into the Big Ten because this is the bottom. But hang on a second. But hang on a minute. Think about something. You're saying that assuming that you're going to play against a really good Ohio State team. I mean, they got beat at home yeah. by Wisconsin. Well, you're we saying, have to since they are better than, in general, they're better than Northwestern, so I'm going to take it at, at face. But, but they, they got gonna, beat at home by I, Wisconsin. I don't care. I'm going to take it at face that Ohio State is better than Northwestern all day and twice on Sunday. And I think most people will. They're going to look at uh, playing Michigan State as a team that's better so than So do you think anything I said is argumentative that says Ohio State's not better than Northwestern? I mean, I don't get your point and what you're saying. Do you think that. Ohio State's not best, better than Northwestern? I think Ohio State is 100% in every single category better than Northwestern. Of West. course they are. No doubt about it. And that's what I th- th- and that's what I'm But talking. I also don't think that, like, when you say you can't play like this against them, I mean, I- I'm also saying that Ohio State, I mean, they're not flawless. They're not Gonzaga. They're not Duke. They're not coming in here and going to be, you know, world beaters on anything. If Indiana plays well, okay, so if Indiana plays well and Ohio State plays well at Assembly Hall, Indiana will win. If Ohio, if Ohio State comes in here and doesn't play well and Indiana plays well, Indiana will win by 30. I don't expect that to happen. You expect them to come in here and battle and compete. But, but you know, I, don't, I just don't, I don't get into the whole comparison of how this team played in that game. Because right now, if we were Ohio State announcers and we were talking about an Ohio State game, we'd be talking about a three-game losing streak. And one of those games was at home to a bad Wisconsin team. So we wouldn't be happy with how they're playing. You would be happy with where they are. They have definitely, in, they're one and three in the Big Ten. They have way underachieved so far in the Big Ten. Eric Draven said, uh, where would it be if it wasn't for Al Durham? Uh, again, no accountability for the guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, but let, why don't we just say, hey, we, you know, thank goodness for Al Durham. Thank goodness for the way he played. Now, he stepped up. Let's give him credit. Justin Smith played a, played offensively, played a good game Howard, tonight. Kurt Knight. What's that? I'm just calling out some guys that are on with us. Uh, Bob says Archie is no discipline. He's lost the team, just like last year. Yeah, I disagree with that. Don't need to go into it. I just disagree. Bill Evans, OSU, will uh, out-hustle this team on Saturday for the win. Ohio State will want the game more than IU and play harder. I mean, what do you mean to say to that? Uh, he's predicting what's going to happen. Um, I mean, I'll guarantee you, if Bill had predicted what was going to happen in this game, he wouldn't have written what it what actually happened, so I don't know that I'm going to focus too much on that. Well, Indiana now has to move forward to take on the Ohio State team on Saturday. It's yep. a team that has not played all that well, but uh, Indiana has played even worse, and so I, uh, that may cancel each other out, but it's an opportunity for Indiana to get a win against a top-level team that they're probably not going to have that frequently with a team that is up there. They're not playing that well that they'll have this Saturday. They, this is, okay, so it's a great opportunity. You know, what did we talk about on uh, what was the game Saturday last Saturday what did we talk about uh, that you know coming off of that loss that Indiana had it was a good opportunity to be able to play against Northwestern we're glad that game was before the Ohio State game well well, we're sitting right in that position we are glad that game was tonight and and they got the win on it and so we move on to Ohio State and I don't expect them to play the same way they played tonight but look let's let's if I'm going to go back on this game for one second, I'm going to say Northwestern tries to make the game ugly. They, you know, they play slow. They run a lot of back cuts. They make you play 27 seconds worth of defense every possession, it seems like. And, and they try to make it ugly, and they did. They were successful at that. And Indiana was able to figure out a way to come back and win. If, if, if you can be simple enough to look at it that way, I, would lo- I wish my mind would let me look at it positively like that. I, but, I, but you have to focus on it that way because that's what we talked about last weekend. We talked about the fact that it was a good it, – we were happy that they played Northwestern in between uh, – what was the game we just played? Uh, Maryland. In between the Maryland game and Ohio State game, we were happy that they had a Northwestern game in there for this exact reason. So let's be thankful for it. They won, and let's move on. Absolutely, and that's what's going to happen as uh, Indiana comes – Back to assembly, the Simon Scott Assembly Hall on Saturday to take on the Ohio State Buckeyes, a team that uh, 
Many of us thought was going to be at the top of the Big Ten standings. They're not right now. They're one and two. Indiana is now one and three. three they're one and three. Oh, they're Ohio State is. So is Indiana. Indiana's two and two. Oh, that's right. They, they actually got the win tonight. I forgot it was so bad. I thought they <laughs> lost. I am with you. I actually thought they lost this game. Uh, so Ohio State looking to even things out in their conference record because they can't go afford to go down one and four. We talked about this on the show. They're, they're a team that's just trying to have a shot at winning this conference championship. You're not going to do that down at one and four. Yeah, and, and you know, quite frankly, they kind of pissed that away when they lost at home to Wisconsin. I mean, that's not a game you can lose. I mean, Michigan State's not going to lose at home to Wisconsin. Um, you know, the, the teams, the team that wins the Big Ten is not going to you know, have that kind of loss on their record. And, and, you know, Ohio State could lose at home to Michigan State and probably still get away with it. You can't lose at home to Wisconsin. I mean, it just can't happen. They're going to have to do something incredibly special, like win at Indiana and at Michigan and at Michigan State and all those things in order to make up for that one home loss that they had. Well, make sure you join us tomorrow on Indiana Sports Meet with Coyle Lee. Of course, we're live 9 to 11 if uh, you're in Southern Indiana. You can listen to us on multiple radio stations down there. Or if not, you can find us on indianasportsbeat.com or any of the places you find the podcast, Spotify, Google Play, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, all that stuff. But uh, then we're back here on Saturday, of course, live from Yogi's after the game with Todd Leary after Indiana takes on Ohio State. Hopefully it's a, another win for Indiana as they can get above 500 in the Big Ten race. But more importantly, get themselves a little momentum and a little confidence. Yeah, I mean, for sure. This would definitely be a good win. This would be, you know, the, the best win on the resume so far, although maybe maybe Florida State is that and going to continue to be that. But, you know, I, I I expected a lot more out of Indiana tonight. And, and quite frankly, you know, I'm just going to look past it and say I'm expecting more out of them this Saturday. I'm expecting them to play better this Saturday. And, um, you know, hopefully that happens. And, and you know, I hope they surprise us. They've surprised us a couple of times this year and not playing well in certain circumstances. And I hope that they can surprise us Saturday positively. We're going to have to continue to have somebody step up besides Trace Jackson Davis tonight. It was Al Durham uh, hitting 9 of 10 free throws uh, at the strike. 11 of 12 free throws. Oh, he ended up 11 of 12. He ended up 11 of 12. And uh, a great night for him, 16 points, especially with 11 of those coming at the free throw line. That's crucial because those are game winners. Or if, he, if he misses those or if Trace Jackson Davis doesn't go six of seven at the free throw line. They're, they're, they're done tonight. They lose a, a horrible loss that there's no recovery from. You lose this game, I don't think there's any recovery. I would agree with you. I, <laughs> they were that close to to being in a in a horrible, horrible position. But they're not, and so, you know, thank goodness is all, all we can say. We cannot thank the Finney Hospitality Group enough uh, coming to you from Yogi's, as always, owned by the Finney Hospitality Group. They own the tap and the social, uh, what's all the other places? Cantina. There? Social Cantina. Uh, smoke Smokes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, some good places run around town. Uh, also the tap in Indianapolis if you're up there in the area there. But uh, we'll be back here on Saturday as Indiana takes on the Ohio State Buckeyes in a noon contest. Uh, also, afterwards, you never know who's going to show up. Could be a big-time person showing up in Indiana on Saturday. We don't know. Uh, a lot of uh, players are going to be in attendance probably, so uh, we'll see how that goes as well. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. You never know. So maybe a good idea to show up at Yogi's on Saturday. You, know, you may want to. But that, that's pretty much we'll it up, man. Anything else to say? Nope. See you tomorrow morning. And see you. We're back tomorrow. Uh, somebody's coming in and tearing the place down. There hey. we go. Things breaking all over the place. <laughs> Thank God it's not me. Uh, well, we appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Thank you so much for being with us here on After the Game with Todd Leary. And join us tomorrow on Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary. Until then, for Todd Leary, I'm Jim Coyle, and I will see you on the radio.